This is Real Ghost Stories Online. As you probably well know, there's a lot of different types of haunting. There's usually not a one-size-fits-all. Sometimes you can relate stories. Sometimes you can say, okay, well, this happened uh, to someone else in a similar way, and that can be comforting or even kind of lead to some ideas and solutions for specific uh, situations and cases. But sometimes it's all over the place. That kind of happens wherever you go, different points in your life, where it seems to leave, and it gets stranger and stranger and stranger. That's what happens in this next story. Take a listen. I've been meaning to submit this for a while. I've been listening since about March of last year, and I'm happy for you to contact me for any clarification. I promise everything I tell you is absolutely true, with the exception of one story happening to me personally. I'd like to be referred to as Tim. I grew up in the South End on Sea in England, on average, down an hour east of London. My childhood home was vaguely haunted, but nothing too special. My dad was a skeptic. My mom had some kind of psychic ability. I grew up knowing about the paranormal and had no reason to doubt it. In 1992, I moved into a flat apartment with my now wife, to be known as Jane. In 1998, we moved from there to a house. The house was relatively new, being built in the mid-70s, and had two or three occupiers before we moved in. It was built in a former orchard. No buildings or anything there previously. We knew most of the history of the place, and there was nothing of concern. In fact, the people we bought it from were moving back to the area when we sold. Came to view, although they didn't put in an offer, we moved in 2002 when my work relocated. The apartment and house were both in South End, although a couple of miles from the town. Can't remember the chronology of events. I'm afraid they're a bit all over the place. In 2000, my son, to be known as Jake, was born in 2002. And his sister, to be known as Tori, was born. We didn't exactly realize the full extent of what happened in the place until after we moved and thought about it. I certainly never actually thought anything in the house, apart from one occasion, and I don't think my wife did. There were a few things that seemed to happen a lot. In the spare bedroom, the picture on the wall, were always wonky. We didn't really think about it. We were always straightening them, but the next time we looked, they were crooked again. Not by the time we reached the door, but just the next time we went in the room. The wall to the back garden seemed to suffer from localized plagues. We'd go out there, the wall would be covered with one day be snails, another day wood lice, and I mean absolutely covered by them. And then the next day, there would be no sign of them anywhere. I worked shifts, so my sleeping pattern was always all over the place. I'd be up late. Quite often, the kids' toys would go off. Had a turtle, which had buttons to push, which would light up or make noises. This went off often. I thought it was just one of the things. Until I realized it never happened once we moved. Here's some specific incidents. What I believe to be the first occurrence happened on a day off. My wife was at work, and I was sitting on the sofa watching television. In front of the TV, there was a pile of four or five VHS video cassettes piled up flat. Not on their sides or edge, but flat. They'd been there a few days. I watched TV and these fell over. The house had previously suffered from subsidence. Had been repaired and sat on a bed of concrete. The house was in a dead end. It was a good 100 yards from a main road with traffic. Even that was not a truck route. Mostly light local traffic. 
I felt nothing at the time, so there was no way anything explicable knocked those tapes over. I was on a boy's holiday for a few days. Spoke to my wife. She told me that she'd been woken up by her face being slapped. They assured her she was dreaming and not to worry. A week or so later, I was home on a day off and a little hungover, to be fair. My son was in his cot and fortunately wanted to stay there. It was the day before his first birthday. I checked at him, went back to bed for an hour, and shortly later was woken up by something touching my face. Well, more like a soft toy falling on me than a slap. The cat soared in the room and the door was shut. It was either a birthday or near Christmas. My son was in his high chair and I was spoon feeding him while sitting on the sofa. As I fed him, he looked up and seemed to watch something that I couldn't see. Move parallel to the line of me and him. He looked as far up as he could and in the line he was following on a high shelf behind him. The two middle cards of four on that shelf fell over. My son went through a phase of waking at night and really screaming. Not crying, but real screams. One night it was my turn to get up and see what I could do to help him. Went into his room. He was standing on his cot and appeared almost inconsolable. I picked him up and held him in my arms with his legs wrapped around me. As I did this, he started looking either side of my head and giggling. He did that a few times and then looked at each corner of the ceiling, in turn, as if he was following something, darting around at the top of the room. With that, he calmed down, was happy to lay down and go back to sleep. I can't say I was very happy or sleepy after that. When he was quite young, he was always good with younger kids and would always play with and amuse them. He did the covering his face with his hands and opening them, saying peekaboo. It was a thing with babies. I realized I had never done that with him. I never noticed anyone else do that either. I don't know where he got it from. Maybe that someone showed him. I just never noticed, but it did strike me as weird. When he was old enough, I carefully asked him, but he doesn't remember anything. My parents live locally, would babysit occasionally. It's fair to say that my mom hated the place and spent as little time in the house as she could. Jake was 18 months when his sister, Tori, was born. I went to the hospital for the birth and my parents came to the house to look after Jake. I got home at 4 a.m. We'd offered my parents a spare bed, but they were still on the sofa. My dad was sound asleep, but my mom was wide awake. She couldn't get out of there quick enough. and She was so uncomfortable. The only specific incident with her that I can remember is this one. As is common in the UK, the toilet and bathroom in the house were separate. The toilet being in a narrow room with the bath and basin being in the room next to it. Not entirely sure what happened, but as I understand it, my mom was using the toilet and a mess appeared on the floor next to the toilet. Just to be clear, my mom was fully with it. This was not any kind of episode and there was not actually the room to do this in. Its place it was either by accident or design. I have one more incident to relate. This is the biggie. It still upsets me a lot 20 years later. I relate to the best of my knowledge and recollection. As I mentioned, this is a bit hazy and was at the time. Honest experience of my life. First up, Jane gets a mention. She's one of my oldest and best friends. She was a girlfriend's friend. And we hit it off and stayed in touch. She's a couple of years younger than me, single, never married, no kids, and an only child. Or the brother and sister each other never had but we also flirt wildly. Despite that, there's never been anything between us, not even a kiss. <laughs> I was home alone. Jake may have been about at this time, but if he was, he was asleep in his cot. My wife was working. I can't remember the exact cir circumstances. I think I'd had a rough night's sleep, so hey, had to lay in. This was in the morning about 9 or 10, and I had a dream. I dreamt that I was having sex with Jane. I don't usually dream about her, and I don't very often have sexual dreams. Not so explicit, anyway. Me and her were having sex in what appeared to be a person-sized stainless steel sink. It ended. I don't think I've had that sort of dream before or since. I know that a lot of men do, though. I woke up. This is where it is hazy. I remember there was someone on me, riding me. I don't know who or what. Mostly, I think I dozed off for a moment. Again, before I woke up, I was certainly alone then. 
I felt spent, even after a bout of good sex. In either sense of the phrase, it took me a while to actually realize what was going on. I think whatever happened was there when I woke up, scared me so much, my mind managed to forget most of it. Do you remember waking up suddenly, being pinned down with a figure of some kind being there and then passing out, waking up again short thereafter and nothing else? I don't know if my life is haunted, my world is haunted, or what's going on, but there seems to be a string of events that have followed me my entire life and still do to this day. stories online want a commercial free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories sign up at apple podcast right now and try it for three days free ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories